There's no sponsor that I use more while I'm awake than NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Man, this is like the Swiss Army knife, the multi-tool of applications. It does a little bit of everything. You always get a great deal at NordVPN.com slash Fightful. You can listen to your favorites abroad. You can shield your data from snoops and criminals, protect yourself on public Wi-Fi, and it works on all your devices and operating systems. It doesn't end there. Change your virtual location and then get pay-per-views at a much more affordable price, TV services at a much more affordable price. you got a password manager, a file encryption tool, threat protections, and on top of that, 24-7 tech support. So if for some reason you don't know exactly how it works, NordVPN.com slash Fightful will help you learn how to do it. Check it out, NordVPN.com slash Fightful. What's up, you guys? Sean Rossap, Fightful, back with a name. You know, we talked to her at Squared Circle Expo in Indianapolis, Mm -hmm. and we're right back here just a couple months later. Big career changes as Missa Kate (laughs) has announced that she is leaving the NWA. (laughs) How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm excited. I'm doing wonderful. I mean... I don't think you had appeared for NWA after we last talked. And I don't think you had for maybe a little bit prior to that as well. So I'm interested to learn like what the heck happened first off. (laughs) And like, at what point did you make this decision? Because you hadn't appeared there in quite some time. Um, so yeah, so there was, I will say, um, yes, I am no longer part of the NWA. Um, Before I say anything, I will say, obviously, as I posted, like, I have learned a lot there. So I am very blessed for any experience that I have had there because it's taught me so much and all all the fun jazz, right? Um, Before I get so sappy. I'm not big on sappy things, so. (laughs) Now bury them. Yeah. Every once in a while, I'll get get in my feels. But um, (laughs) no, so pretty much NWA, right? Um. There was uh, one of the shows I wasn't able to um, get to for personal reasons. Um, and But then after that, I did do a set of tapings with them. Mm-hmm. And they haven't uh, aired those matches, which I was really surprised at. So there are some secret Mr. Kate matches in the archive of NWA. Um, one was against Kenzie Page. One was against Ella Envy, and I i mean, I was proud of those matches. I had a really fun time with them, and it was really exciting. Um, so that, I don't know what happened to them. I don't know why they got posted. Um, as far as me not being a part of them anymore, um, I wish I could have some cool, exciting story where I'm like, screw them, I hate this place, like, and throw my towel and leave. But honestly, it was just end of a contract, and... You know, as far as I know, we left on good terms. Um, you took a stand against cocaine use on screen. That's that cool. is right. That is right. You only do that in the privacy of your own home. Exactly. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, but uh, yeah, so I wish I had some really fun, exciting story. But ultimately, that's what it came down to. I, I don't know on their end. I don't know. Um, I was surprised that I wasn't invited back to like... Uh, uh-huh the pay-per-view or another set of tapings that surprised me. And, um, when asked, I didn't get any negative feedback. I mean, it was just kind of like, Oh, just not happening this time. And I was like, okay. Um, you were, you were very consistently featured, if not in title matches, then in like top contender matches, whether it be the women's world title or or the tag titles in general, it felt like it felt like for a, a better portion of like seven eight months, like every single match that you were having was like top contender match or title match. Right, and then I had an intergender match with Sail the Pale, which um, was yeah. really fun. So I was just like, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff happening, and I don't really know. I mean, there's always going to be rumors and speculations, right? But to me, I'm like, I unless I'm hearing it from the head of the horse, I'm not going to believe the ass. So, (laughs) um, yeah, I don't, I was, you know, like how you're saying, there was a lot of cool stuff happening. Um, 
while I was there, obviously, like there was a uh, Brent Sinclair now, but I tagged with Maddie Rinkowski, who had the tag belts there. Um, it was always fun, like trying to talk to Billy, try to figure out storylines and stuff. And I guess he always didn't see like certain things or certain ideas were like in his vision currently, which I was like, okay, I'm not, he's the boss. I'm just here. Right. But I yeah. constantly tried giving ideas. Cause I'm like, that's, that's what I love. I love telling stories. That's why I got into wrestling. Yeah. Um, so even after Maddie uh, got signed to WWE and she wasn't a part of NWA anymore, um, or Ren now, sorry. Um, I still tried pitching certain things and he was just like, eh. like, he's just like, not right now, right now, not, not, not a bit, whatever. I was like, okay, cool. And then eventually when I did the Joker for NWA for the Halloween show, again, Billy being Billy, right? Cause he's into all the weird, wacky stuff. He's like, okay, I could do something with that. I was like, cool, let's go. I'm like, I love the Joker. We'll figure it out. So that was kind of the direction that we were going. We we're trying to tell stories of Miss uh, and, you know, Joker and is that taking over her and stuff like that. So there was like a promo video posted of me beating up some guy in an alley and might have hit him in the head with a brick, but we don't know because, you know, the footage <laughs> came out. Uh, <laughs> so we'll never know. There's no real evidence. You can't blame me. Um, yes. But yeah it's just it was kind of going in the net in that direction and the last two matches that i had there kind of were um establishing that a little bit more so i'm kind of upset that i don't get to see those only because i sure. was really excited from a like a learning aspect you know because again i i want to tell stories so i'm like i want to no matter where i work i want to do everything I can for that company to, you know, just, I don't yeah, know. It's, that's the whole point I'm in wrestling, right? You want to tell stories, you want to entertain people. Um, so I was really excited to see how those turned out because they're really fun matches. And there were people, I will say, that were saying how proud of them, of me and like just us as like, you know, just uh, having the match and then just proud of me for the character that I, you know, I'm getting out of my comfort zone. Yes. Um, so yeah. And, and they weren't just my friends too. That's how, you know, it's real. It's it, when you have other people coming up to you that aren't just like your little buddy being like, Hey, good job. Like it was like people of all different areas. Um, so that's what made me really excited to see it. Cause I was like, okay, cool. There's people that I don't talk to on a regular basis here and something stood out to them where they're like, oh, that was really cool. Or that was really gross. Right. Like that was really fun. So yeah, I don't know. So we'll see if they ever air them, but. So, I mean, you said that you, you feel like you left on good terms. Was mm -hmm. there any, was there ever a period that you were like, okay, well maybe this is headed down a road where our relationship was ending. I mean, obviously you had a massively successful tag team there with, with Maddie and mm -hmm. There was, I knew there was a gap between your all's last match together and her getting signed, but like, obviously that, that was a hit in that company and it worked really well. And that was a year ago. Now you were champions. Yeah. Like, was there a period throughout there where, or, or after that you were like, okay, maybe they're wrapping me up or maybe this relationship won't necessarily work as constructed. Um, I, after Maddie left there, what obviously, cause you know, you're known as a tag team. So you're just okay. kind of like, all right, where is this going to go from here? But you know, I would, again, like uh, consistently trying to pick Billy's brain and like, so I wasn't, I, at that time, like, yeah, it's like, okay, what's going to happen, I guess is where I was at. Um, but Billy and I have good communication as far as I knew. Um, Anytime I saw him about giving him ideas and whatnot, and he was like willing to listen. It was, again, it's just a matter of like his direction and where he saw things. Um, so after she left, it wasn't so much there. It was just kind of like, okay, what do we do with me now? Uh, I wouldn't say it wasn't until recently the last show I wasn't invited to. That's where okay. I was just like, okay, what happened? <laughs> like, what did sure. I do? Like, just let me know. Um, but again, it could have been something as simple as I wasn't in his vision and that's fine. Um, but yeah, I, 
nobody's ever contacted me saying anything bad. Um, I'm more than willing to listen, obviously. But did you have a conversation? Like, did they, or did your deal just come up, or did you all like sort of have a conversation? And it's like, okay, well, see you down the road. Um, yeah, it just the deal kind of came up. Um, I kind of, you know, I saw the writing on the wall. I'm like, well, if you're not asking for me back, obviously there isn't going to be any discussion further, which again, I've always been like, I'm never going to stay where I'm not welcomed. Um, that's, I don't want to say that's what it was, but that's the kind of feeling that I got, obviously, after you don't get asked back. Um, but yeah, I was never, you know, it's kind of like, if you don't see me as part of your product, you don't see that I can benefit you in any way. Yes. And that's fine. That's kind of on you, you know? Um, and again, I'm not, you're paying my bills. You're my boss. So if that's your view, then so be it. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, again, we'd have to, you have to get Billy on here and ask him. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if but, he'll be doing my show anytime soon. Uh oh! Right after I mean, these. <laughs> well, no, not not Obviously. after those. It's a couple of years ago. I said, "Why? Why the hell are? Why is Tyrus winning so many matches? What is going on? I should not <laughs> be able to wrestle better matches than this person featured on your show." And then he put the world title on him the next month, and I was like, "Oh boy!" But <laughs> like, listen, that is. Oh, I generally enjoyed NWA programming. Uh, I, that was just one glaring thing that I was like, listen, I get the Fox news connection. I get the promotion aspect of it. People watching the show should not be able to have better wrestling matches than the world champion on that show, which leads me to a very important question. Miss a Kate, what you got? What's your problem? What's your problem? Shit. What's your problem? Where My were problem? you on February 23rd, 2024? Do you know where you were? I was with you, right? Or didn't we? Wasn't that? No, no, no I'll tell you I? where you were. You were at the Berwyn Eagles Club. Who were you oh. teaming with that night? <laughs> wait, wait, what did you say? I missed the last part. <laughs> you were at the Berwyn Eagles Club. Who were you teaming with that night? In a Berwyn street fight against Heather oh, Reckless with and Maggie. McKenzie against uh, Heather Reckless and uh, Maggie Lee. What do you mean, what's my problem? problem? That's my problem. She beat me in a Berwyn Street fight about three months before that. And you're just really? out here willy nilly teaming with Shaz and McKenzie in Berwyn Street fights. I she mean, she has my a ass, record. <laughs> whooped my ass with a kendo stick all around that venue. It was embarrassing. She broke my knee with her ass. That was a thing that happened. Wow. And you're just out here. I Now, it's before you and, you and I met. And we did our first interview, so I'm going to let it slide, but I'm just disappointed. So now not, does this mean not, not that angry, we have just to have a Berwyn street fight? Like, I feel like you're still really trying to. I hope not. I don't want to get my ass kicked again. <laughs> well, listen, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Well, I promise I won't break your kneecap with my ass because Shaza is packing a little bit of a dump truck back there that I'm very jealous of. So that won't happen on my end. <laughs> I thought that an atomic drop would work. It didn't. And there you go. I liked it a lot more last year when you were beating her up in matches. That's that's my that's my preference. If you could simply just do that. Although I did try to get her to take the bumps for me in the Effie match in return for me sponsoring her visa. We'll see how that goes. But I mean, we all know just, everyone in wrestling is a friend of me. Everyone in wrestling is a friend of me. So uh, yes. one day, just, you know, we're going to tag up to beat up freaking Maggie yeah. and Heather. And the next day we're going to beat each other up. Who knows? Just disappoints me. I mean, almost as disappointing. You'll get as over this, it. You'll get over this, it. Cry me a oh, river. Here's the world's smallest violin. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> that's uh, almost as disappointing as the last place Chicago Cubs <laughs> of which you are a fan of when I met you, you had that Chicago Cubs jersey on. I said, man, it's going to be a rough season for you. The Cincinnati Reds are a half game ahead of last place right there. But there are some little things that I would hear when poking around when I'd be like, 
Miss Kate's a free agent. Is this person interested? This company interested? I had heard maybe there was some interest on TNA's side. I don't know what you can say, if anything, or if you can just shoot me one of those looks and maybe I can presume it, write a big clickbait headline off of it, one of those. But have you had any conversations? And did Gail Kim say anything nice about me? Um, well, since we're going there, um, let's just say when the first day that I announced, um, I was no longer a part of NWA, I took, I don't want to say two days off, but I was very, I didn't know how the news was going to be. So let's just say Jordan was working very hard for me. Those first 48 hours, he earned his okay. paycheck. Um, and, uh, I will say I've been having conversations. There have been conversations had with multiple people um, over multiple things. <laughs> now, where and who, you're just going to have to keep watching and waiting to find out. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Well, <laughs> uh, hmm. I bet, you know, I bet what happened. I bet they looked and they saw the E-team with Shaza and they're like, no. No, it's because they saw I was a Cubs fan. That's why. That's really what probably, happened. Probably. <laughs> probably. Like, yeah, this girl's a loser. She likes the Cubs. Get out of here. Get oh out of here. Oh, my gosh. Well, I mean, you did see Maddie, who is now Ren Sinclair, get signed. And anybody that's seen her knew that she would fit specifically well at NXT as well. Yeah. Right? Like, like a glove. What What were your feelings when, when that happened? And do you all still keep in touch? Or is she just letting the fame get to her head? Oh, she's so big time now. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I love Maddie. No, we'll still talk she's here great. and there a little bit. Yeah, no, we'll still talk. We'll check in with each other. So that's cool. Um, but in like it, it was, and that's how I think a lot of people read that. Like, and she was in Texas, I was in Chicago, so there was absolutely no reason for us to click as far as a tag team. But you could just see in the ring, like we're just for whatever reason. Um, I always say she's my Texas version of myself, and I'm her Chicago version. But I'm a lot less filtered than her. <laughs> um, you guys fit so well together on screen. Like, you all complimented each other really, really well. Thank you. And it was, like, a lot of fun. And I was like, damn, we could have done so many cool things. And, like, between me figuring out character when I was allowed to do character and uh, her being her, obviously. Um, yeah, we could have done, like, a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun ideas that I was really sad and depressed that not depressed that's a strong word but i was sure. very disappointed that uh we weren't able to express that and show that to people and entertain people but no i was really happy for her honestly like i to this day i'm like oh i'm like you got this like i'm so excited for her she um she deserves it she's really smart and she just when her and i obviously would room together and we would talk about wrestling and i was just like oh like she understands a lot and she's taught me stuff so um i'm really excited to see what they do with her i know she just on nxt she saw something that she wasn't supposed to see i want to know yes i'm gonna text her i'm gonna be like so can you tell me like am i allowed to know um but yeah no it's it's really cool and i'm excited to see what the future has for her and who knows maybe one day down the road m95 might reunite um there's a bunch of forbidden her. doors being open I was going to ask about that. Like it isn't something like I, I'm not like asking you to be like, Oh yeah, guys, please team us up again. But like, is that something that would interest you? I mean, you are a free agent at this point. Oh, a hundred percent. No, I, I tag with her any day. Like she, it's fun. Um, I appreciate and respect her opinion when it comes to matches and stuff like that. Um, and like promos and like how you said, like it's, it's fun trying to bounce stuff off of each other. Um, and especially we've kind of like we've grown closer a little bit um like we're kind of close there but like just the fact that we still keep in touch i'm like to me says something so uh i think especially with the knowledge that she has now the knowledge that i have now um i think it would be a better more experienced and uh more openly creative uh m95 or however you, i don't know however you want to say that but yeah. yeah or maybe we just fight each other maybe that would be fun too you know yeah 
<laughs> Maybe this is what she saw that she wasn't supposed to sh see. That's that right <laughs> there. <It's> <laughs> Dude, I like, so here's the thing, a story about that. I did not know that was happening. I don't. Of course. <laughs> I didn't know I was backstage and freaking Sinister Minister comes out, uh, comes <laughs> back there. And he had like all this stuff on his face. And me being me, I was like, ha, you just do coke or something? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, wait. Well, I was like, did you really? And like, and they were just like, yeah, we just like did the scene out there. I was like, hold on, hold on. I was like, it's, wait, I was joking. Are you continuing my joke or what am I missing here? So I found out by Sinister coming backstage with his face all white. Um, and I was like, oh, and then I saw the clips later on because obviously they went viral all over. NWA yeah. does come. So, like, unreal. I guess we're there. Oh, we're doing you're back. that. A couple of people, I, I had mentioned them earlier, not not just you teaming with Shaza, but that you've been sort of anchored to on the independent scene, Heather Reckless, Maggie Lee. It seems like, like I mean, that, that scene had been pretty robust. Like to have talent of, of that level, like Missa Kate, Heather Reckless, Maggie Lee, where a company could just be like, yeah, let's run that back. Let's do that. That's, that's pretty, that's a, pretty nice thing to have it's a pretty comfortable thing to have how has that been working with them so much because all three of you are standouts thank you um yeah heather and i kind of started around the same time so um uh, that's always been fun like thinking back to us being super like green as goose shit as people like to say <laughs> um and trying to figure stuff out and just trying to be polite and be like oh i want to you know to now where it's like we're more established and it's kind of we could be at that point where it's just like what do you want to do i don't know let's and we just kind of like shoot the shit and we could put a match together and understand each other pretty quickly and that's always really you know you have that uh comfort i can't say words comfort ability i have a messed up accent um <laughs> I can blame my Bostonian stepfather and my Macedonian grandfather. Um, and then I'm from Chicago. So I'm all, I'm all jacked oh, man, up. Man, you got everything. Dude, I'm like, yeah, people are like, are you from New York? Are you from like, where are you? I was like, I don't know, man. I was like, pick a place. Just tell me. I was like, it, it's, <laughs> who knows? Um, but yeah, so with her and then Maggie being as new as she is, and it's really fun when somebody's like hungry and, um, one thing I'll give Maggie is like, and I'm not saying whatever about me, but she's always like, she's always asked me questions and I feel like she values my opinion because she still sure. asks me stuff. Um, so, and I appreciate her and I being able to like, just be blunt where, you know, sometimes there's, you always feel like you need to like sugarcoat because you don't really know people and stuff yeah, like that. Of course. Where her and I, I think we have that understanding of like, we're both, not cut from the same cloth, but there were those kind of tomboys were like, all right, like this is, this is dumb. No, like we'll be able to tell each other like, no, nah, that don't make sense. Like we're not doing that. Like, <laughs> um, so that's really fun. So in between both of them, it's always cool trying to figure out different ways to do things, different stories to tell. Um, Heather and I obviously have had multiple stories at different places. Either I'm a good guy. She's a bad guy. She's bad, you know, and vice versa. So trying to sit, tell different dynamics and like, as we grow in our career now, she left me and she moved to Florida. Um, so I'm a little pissed that. at her about that, but now I have a place in Florida to go if I want. Uh, I mean, that does, she, I mean, she, that she does doesn't know that yet, but she'll find out. <laughs> that does drastically change the Chicago scene because any given night you could see a combination of you mm -hmm. three and then like Sierra or somebody else like that, just on a show. And I can't tell you how many times I would, see a poster and it's like well there you all are again and again and again that there, there has to be an incredible level of comfortability with you guys yeah and i feel like when you know you're gonna be around each other and um you just kind of build that rapport with each other and we're just kind of like all right this is how it's yes. gonna be we know we're gonna see it. that's and again it, it's not forced yeah because that would, that would really suck i don't go to shows or like see a flyer i'm like Ugh. You know, I'm wrestling that. Like, no, it's not like that. It's yeah. like, cool. What are we gonna do this time? So, <laughs> how am I gonna no. mess you up this time? How am I gonna punch you in the face this time? <laughs> you also worked recently with Izzy Moreno, who got started 
very young, doing a lot of different things. I, I honestly, I admire the way that she came up because she got just harassed relentlessly by weirdo online wrestling fans. And then she's like, you know what? If you think I'm too young to wrestle, I'm going to go do jujitsu. And then I'm going to learn the media end. And then I'm going to do all this. As a result, she cuts promos in a lot of grown men twice her age and is now wrestling a, a pretty, pretty heavy schedule. How was that working with her? It was fun. I liked being able to play off of somebody. Um, not you know, not taking shots at people, but there aren't a lot of characters on the indies, per se. Yeah. Um, like there are, but there aren't. Um, so it's it was nice that you know again she what well, she is her amped up right like she is a super fan of this, but it was really easy me with my character being a super amazing person of course like not sarcastic or bullying at all. Um, I'm an angel. Um, but no, being able to <laughs> play with that and, um, yeah, it was, of course, like you get a little, I don't want to say nervous, but you get curious of like, okay, how is this going to be? Cool. How is she in the ring? Is it, you know, stuff like that. Um, but I wasn't really worried about it. I remember the first time I met her, we're at the ECW arena and in, in Philly and, um, found out we were working each other and like right away we kind of just like clicked we're like should we start this now we're like yeah let's do it so right off the <laughs> bat i was like oh this is gonna be so much fun um so i definitely want to wrestle her again because i think it was and again on her end too right because she's only how many matches deep yeah. um si even since wrestling her she's even getting more experience and now she uh, she's the mission pro women's champion so yeah. she definitely has a little bit more um uh, confidence in herself which she should so because she's she's super great um but i definitely as great as she is i'm happy to punch her in the face any day kick her in the face any day so just i'm looking for somebody let's see in chicago she's gonna win in chicago you gotta win in texas but let's go on my home turf we'll see how that's gonna go i mean it's I, I love seeing her do this i love seeing her do it the right way as well and she's doing mm -hmm. so well and when I saw that she was working with you, I was like, well, th that's also being in good hands and somebody that she can learn from. I'm interested. Who have you learned the most from in pro wrestling? Ooh, I like that. No one's ever asked me that. Um, Not Shaza. <laughs> um, I'm not trying to say a generic answer, but I try to learn a little. I learn a little bit from every experience, whether it's good or bad, right? Everything's a lesson. There's no bad experience. You're just learning. Um, people that have helped me a lot, um, we'll say at NWA, right? So like Jazz mm -hmm. is somebody who's helped me a lot. Oh, Sam Pale, Aaron Stevens. Um, they were always there. And then Rob, Ego Anthony, anytime I had a question, he was always there to help. Um, so those kind of people. And then I uh, worked at AW, did some extra work. Um, I picked the brain of, uh, oh, my God. You worked Jimmy. with a lot of people. Jerry Lynn. I just said Jimmy. Yeah. Holy crap. My brain is like, I, I swear. Today's the first day I had coffee in like two weeks, so I think I'm malfunctioning. Um, I tried doing a little cleanse. Uh, Jerry Lynn. So when I was at AW, or like even now, like if I could reach out, he's more than honest to give me an opinion. Um, Nick Aldis, when he was at NWA, and I've seen him at an indie show before he got signed. Even, I will say even, like, now, I, he's he's just, I'm very blessed that there are a lot of different people that I can reach out to and just be like, hey, give it to me straight. How bad was this? Where can I get better? What was good? What can I, so, um, yeah, there's a lot of different people, and I think the best, one of the best ways to learn is by error so sure. when i first started out i noticed that i was wrestling um even like a little bit like we'll say three four years in right i noticed that i was wrestling a lot of people that were around my experience level or less than my experience level or you know a little bit newer so in my head i was like wait how am i supposed to get better because i always had the mindset i had the jock mindset of iron supposed to sharpen iron right Yes. So I didn't realize again, lesson, right? 
no, those experiences, working with people that are less experienced than you helps you tremendously. Cause now there are moments and matches where I'm like, Hey, um, this went wrong or like, you know, I know how to I'll say, I'm again, I'm still learning, but I'm better at fixing things or thinking on the fly or, you know, like I'm more comfortable in mistakes. Um, Chavo Guerrero is another person like, oh, yeah, great guy. Um, someone to reach out to and he did a seminar over here at where I train and I'm sorry, Chavo, if I'm spilling your secrets here, but you said it to me. So, um, one of the things that he said that resonated with me was he goes, I am the master of mistake making. I am a professional mistake maker. Meaning he would give examples of different matches and like he would uh, make mistakes and obviously. Um, and he's like, I was able to think on the fly how to fix that. Or because those mistakes happen, if they happen later on, I knew how to fix that. And that's kind of like when he said that, I was like, oh, so that's what that experience was for me. That was that learning curve for me was, hey, if shit goes sour, like I could figure out, I'm confident enough in myself that we can get back to where we need to go. Because I've had matches with girls where they've been kind of like knocked loopy or um, not by me. Uh, just so that's clear, <laughs> not by me. There have been multi-man matches. Just state, statement made. Um but no, I've had matches, multi my matches where again, you kind of have to, you kind of always have to watch. Um, yeah. Even if it's not my job or my area or my spot, we'll say, you still need to know what's going on. And luckily, there were a couple instances, unfortunately, that you know a couple girls got hurt. Um, and because I was paying attention and I kind of knew how to recover, we were able to you know, recover and move on from that. So, yeah. And, uh, you had mentioned AEW, you worked with man, a who's who when you were <laughs> there doing extra work, uh, Nyla, Emmy Sakura, Julia, who has blown up, obviously Ruby, uh, I think Anna and Ty Conti, and then Sheeta as well. Yes. Look at now, you, that memory, man. Good for you. I mean, listen, I watched AEW Dark. I really love that show. I, I am a believer that sometimes you just need to see wrestlers do their cool shit. Yeah. And I loved watching that show. I like really enjoyed it. But uh, I mean, obviously, when you're in the NWA, I'm sure that those opportunities to do things like that don't necessarily come up in the same way. Was that something that you sort of had to give up in order to be a regular at NWA? So, yeah, that was uh, a downside of NWA um, because when I signed, at the time, they were the only one that offered me a contract. Sure. And then it was, of course, Universe, right? As soon as it happened, I swear, I was like, as soon as I signed, you have people like, hey, what's going on? And I'm like, where were you literally like two days ago? Um, of course. Anyway, so, <laughs> um, yeah, when I signed with them, I was exclusive. So that meant I couldn't do any other TV work or anything unless it was approved, which it wasn't going to be. Uh, that was made clear. So <laughs> um, there were things that I turned down. There was an opportunity, me possibly going to Japan, that I had to turn down. Um, there were um, bookings in Canada. Um, I do have a passport, FYI. Um, because I was exclusive to NWA and, um, no matter what, if they say you need to be here at a certain date, I would have to cancel any other bookings. Um, there were a couple other things that I had to cancel, which kind of sucks for me and my business. Right. Because now I, I kind of messed up my relationship with those companies, um, which I can't get mad at those companies because, again, that's their business. They can't promote somebody who's not going to be there, and they can't try to bring you in if you're if you're going to cancel. Be like, hey, my bad. Actually, I'm not going to be there when it's like a week out, two weeks out, you know, sometimes a couple days out. Um, so that was a downfall uh, um, being there exclusively. So hopefully, uh, now that I'm, yeah. I have so much more free time and. Um, I am, 
like I said, I'm really excited. There's a lot of the Japan thing. I've always wanted to go and train there um, and learn. And hopefully that opportunity will come back up. Um, which I believe it will. Um, there was a possibility of me going to Mexico um, during that time frame. And I obviously I couldn't, uh, couldn't go. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, I have long-winded answers. Um, if you can't tell, oh, I, love talking. I mean, that's I love talking that's about what we like. That's why we're why we're interviewing you. But I mean, like as a Chicago girl, what was it like for you to work now Arena and Wintrust Arena? Because I mean, was was that something? Was that like a goal of yours, or was that just a holy shit? This is cool. <laughs> it was. I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. The now Arena, which it's outside of Chicago. I am a Chicago girl through and through. So I was like, all right, this is cool. Like, don't get me wrong. It's an arena. It's dope. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Wintrust arena, that was, that was a big deal. Um, and it was like, I was asked, um, by, uh, when I, I was on busted open and Mickey James was in her, uh, was on there. One of the, you know, to say interviewer, but it's Mickey James. I can't say that. Um, <laughs> For sure. Right. Um, but no, she asked me, she's like, well, how did that feel? And I was just like, honestly, it just felt, it felt right. Like, don't get me wrong. Indies is cool. It's a different intimate feel and you get to interact with, uh, people right there and the kids and you could go in the crowd and you know, it's, it's a different feel than when you're in an arena. Now you're in an arena that there's like what thousands of thousands of people there and you're like looking at them up and down and, um, the cameras never caught it at AEW, I don't think. But there was a, cu uh, a couple times where I was just like, I'm standing in the ring and I was just like, it just kind of feels right. Like, I don't know how to explain it. And not saying like in a, not in a cocky way, but like in a, okay, I'm, I want to do this. This is, I want to be in these settings more. So. Well, I mean, it was, I mean, th that's obviously like a, a scenario that, gosh, you probably played out in your head before if competing in a big arena close to home or, or at home in one sense. Yep. Are there any places uh, or, or I'm sure there have been or environments, especially on the Indies, because you could wrestle at breweries. You can wrestle at Eagles clubs. You never know where you might wrestle that you get there and you go, Oh wow, this is a cool environment for pro wrestling. So there were a couple that I have wrestled at, and then I want to say places that I do want to wrestle at. I wrestled okay. on a military base. Oh, nice. That was really fun. Um, and it was really funny, especially because, you know, on the indies, how you, you know, you go to the outside and then you'll put somebody like your opponent on the fans to hold them. So you chop them. Well, I didn't think at a military base, they're trained. Hey, don't hold people. So when I went to go yeah. do that, I've never seen grown men run 10 feet back and say, no, 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 so quick That's in my funny. life. <laughs> so that was really funny. Um, that was something, obviously, because it's a it's a military base, so it was never really public, um, so you couldn't record anything. And then another place that I wrestled was uh, on an ice skating rink. Oh, in nice. Wisconsin. Um, the ring was on the ice skating. Obviously, there's like stuff down. Um, Heather Reckless and I actually, you can see she That's threw cool. me into a goal. Uh, she slid me across the ice and threw me into a goal. So that was funny. Um, there, there's a venue here. TNA ran it. It's the Lexington Ice Center, and it's okay. not on the ice rink. It's like in a small room off the ice rink, but they have Bible themed mini golf there as well. And listen, I'm not not a big Bible guy. The Bible kicks ass when you got to golf through it. It's incredible. <laughs> you learn so much. I want to go now. It's really interesting. Oh, it's, it's incredible. You got to get booked in Lexington. It is, it is a blast. Like 50. <laughs> All in one. God bless. Um, But sorry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they got Old That's Testament, really cool. New Testament, and miracles. There. I love it. All of them. All of them. Oh, I want to go. It's so um, good. You've got to try it. But yeah, other places that you'd be interested in. Uh, the one that means, well, two, but the one that means the most to me, cause obviously I've been, you know, a fan of WWE. It's now called, Ro it's now called Rosemont. Um, but it used to be oh, called yeah. the horizon <laughs> mm -hmm. for all the oldies. We used to know it's called the horizon. Um, 
but yes, or the Allstate Arena. I'm sorry, I mixed that up. It's yes. called Allstate Arena now. It used to be called the uh, Horizon. Um, Rosemont Horizon. Yeah. Thank right. you. Yeah, you know, so, uh, you see, you you get me. Um, the coffee is on a downward spiral right now. Listen, I I watched <laughs> WrestleMania 13 too many times. I remember, I remember the Rosemont Horizon and 22 also, right? It was it was WrestleMania 22. I, so. I believe so. That's my lucky number. Born on 23, but everyone always took 23 because everyone's a freaking fraud and trying to yeah. rep Jordan where I'm actually born on 23 because I'm born for greatness. Um, so I had to settle for oh, 22. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Feel kind of passionate about that. Um, but no, so I'll stay in Arena, Rosemont Horizon, whatever you want to call it. That's again, that's home. And especially because I've had family members work there. So I've actually gotten like inside scoops of the full arena. Um, so it's like near and dear personal in my heart for that. But then the other one, and it's gonna happen, I'm putting it out into the universe. I'm going it. to wrestle on Wrigley Field one day. I don't know oh, how that'd be great. I don't know how. I threw the first pitch. I'm going to wrestle right where I threw that first pitch, and I'm calling it. Uh, listen, I I loathe the Chicago Cubs, but that would objectively be fantastic. That would be how so cool, cool. Would it be to have wrestling at Wrigley Wrigley freaking Field, man? I know Cody Rhodes a few years ago in AEW. Like I think I asked him about venues he'd want to do, and he mentioned Miller Park, and I okay. like. And that's where the Brewers play, and I'm like, I could just imagine Darby sliding down that goddamn slide, <laughs> and like hitting somebody oh, or something like that but yeah i think baseball baseball field stadiums are very underutilized i mean they're jeff jarrett used to run them all the time for his indie companies and stuff because yeah. of those connections but i i agree i think wrigley would be great right i feel like there's so i'm i'm again i think it could be there's probably reasons i don't know about i'm just a fan right and i'm just like this would be a cool place um yes so I'm like, yeah, I'm surprised more like companies don't try to run on, which I wonder if it has something to do with they don't want to ruin the turf and, and all that crap. So I could see that also. What was it like uh, throwing out the first pitch? That was just like, it was last year, I think you, you had the belt with you, if I remember. Yeah, it was. Um, I just got notified actually uh, on some thing on my phone <laughs> saying it, I just crossed the year for it. Um yeah, it was, uh, you could tell I was so giddy because I was yeah. like actually really calm. I was really calm, even though my parents, uh, didn't believe good parents. Right. Um, they're like, you're not gonna, you're not gonna throw it from like, you know, the plate, right? Like you're going to be a little bit up. I was like, no, I'm throwing it from the mount. Like it, it's, it, yeah. I'm Oh, you're going to miss it. You're going to, you're going to disgrace the family. And I was just like, wow. Nice to know you have confidence in me, mom, done it. Like my stepdad. Um, but I did it. It was a little foul, but that was my fault. Rookie mistake. I looked at the ball. I knew it as soon as that happened. I was like, and damn it. Um, <laughs> a little on the outside. Um, listen, listen, to you, you could argue you stuck with a tradition. You hit him with the rookie of the year floater. With, with that I'm one, use that now. Your there mom was in the crowd, and she just goes float it, <laughs> and there you go. We're gonna go with that. We're gonna use that. Um, yeah, but no, it was. You could tell I was like super giddy um, because again, I went with my best friend since grammar school, my stepdad, and Mr. Doug Simmons, who is my adopted uncle. Um, which, That's if you cool. people know who Doug is, he's a personal trainer. He trains Sky. He's trained Ali. Um, He's a he's a secret Chicago staple that kind of is like in the shadows that helps everybody. Um, super good dude. Um, but yeah, so it was cool going there with people that have been there on my wrestling journey or life journey or whatever you want to call it. Um, but they were making me nervous. I'm over here like, oh, this is really fun. This is really cool. They're like, oh my god, aren't you aren't you aren't you scared? Like all the I'm like. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, well, all these people. I'm like, do you guys not know what I do? I was like, I'm in front of people all the time. Um, I was like, you guys know I have stage fright. Like, you're not helping. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, so it was like funny because I was like walking up there and I even like I'll watch like the little videos and I'm just like like a little kid in the candy store because I was like, oh, like I remember I was there like when the Cubs won the World Series. Like I wasn't in Wrigley because it didn't happen there, obviously, but I was right outside on uh outside of a bar watching through the window um and like you know of course chicago girl might have a couple drinks um with the bleacher in the bleachers there and um might partake 
partook in the snake, if you know what the snake is. Um, yes. So, yeah, so a lot of good memories. <laughs> so it was really cool, like, being able to stand there. And I remember it was, like, really funny. You can go and watch and you see me, like, waving. So yes. I was like, oh, somebody knows me. And it was that day, too. I didn't realize how many people that I knew were at that game. Yeah. So I got a bunch of messages being like, holy crap, I'm here. You threw out the first pitch. So that was really so fun. Cool. Was, overall, it was a really fun experience. So, yeah. Uh, but before we wrap up, please let the people know where they can support you, follow you, keep up to date with what you got going on. Because I get the feeling that before long, you're going to have a lot of stuff going on. A little bit. The future's looking pretty fun. Um, <laughs> this is again like I, I took a little little baby hiatus, um, but it's gonna start rolling again. I'm really excited for it. Uh, but yeah, follow me, Missa Kate twenty three M I S S A K A T E two three uh, Instagram and Twitter, and then I have a TikTok that I think is just Missa Kate. I think I'm freaking hilarious. You guys know I'm freaking hilarious, so just go follow me. Um, I I find you hilarious. I mean. <laughs> You're only laughing with me, right? Not at me. <laughs> yes, yes. Listen, I, I, I can't, I can't risk it at this point. I know where you have, you have, where your allegiances lie based on on your match history. So I'm not going to well, match risk history. I'm from Chicago. I might know people of different areas. Um, but yeah. Oh, damn. Uh -huh. damn. <laughs> but um, yeah. So. Yeah, follow me on there, and then uh, I am actually going to be releasing new merch soon. Um, nice. A lot of fun stuff coming up, so make sure I have it linked so you could go. And you can just click links and buttons, and you'll find stuff, sure. and I'll be posting. So, yeah, go check it out. It's always great to talk to you. I'm sure we'll be running into each other soon. I'm, I'm at Chicago Indies all the time at this point. Oh, yeah. You're stuck mm -hmm. with me now. I'm going to annoy oh, you man. for life now. You're screwed. You are screwed. <laughs> oh, no. Until next time, guys, we're out. <laughs>